What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon, and I'm back with another episode of the Sunday Scary Stock Talk podcast. Riding solo dolo this week and uh, probably every week going forward. Uh, Dan, unfortunately, got a new position uh, that doesn't allow him to do uh, any kind of content creation like this. So um, it's going to be me going forward. But, uh, you know, the show must go on. Green Candle must go on. So uh, I'm planning on getting some more guests. Um, so it's not just me talking to the uh, camera and talking to the wall. Um so if you guys know any guests that, you know, I could talk macro to or anything like that, uh, feel free to send them my way. Just tweet at me um, and tag them. And uh, yeah, well, maybe we'll set up a DM or, or, or something like that um, to get them on the pod. But anyway, um, let's kind of just jump right into it. I'll go with a little macro talk and then we're going to break down uh, the Bitcoin mining Valkyrie ETF uh, ticker WGMI. Uh, but first, let's go into the macro. So um you know, right now we're in a very, very weird place in the United States, at least um, in, in that market specifically because of the impending war uh, going on in Russia and Ukraine. Um, right now, the Russians are invading the Ukraine and everybody's trying to cut off um, every connection that they have to Russia. Uh, so whether it's uh, central banks or, or, or banks that have connections to Russia or anything like that, the United States is trying to cut them off and and everybody else in between is as well. Um, so Putin's just kind of, uh, you know, a, a dog, so to speak. I mean, he's getting in there. And he, he wants to, uh, you know, take this country for what it is. And uh, it's really unfortunate. Um, it's tough to talk about stocks and and everything like that with this impending war. Uh, going on and it's uh, hopefully it'll stop with Russia and Ukraine but it seems like the Chinese um, are kind of talking about taking Taiwan as well um, so Dan and I talked about this a little bit last week um, and since then we've seen Jen Psaki kind of come in front of the United States people and talk about how the war on Ukraine uh, between Russia and Ukraine is the reason for gas prices hiking so much. And it's not like, uh, you know, gas prices have been hiking, uh, you know, since uh, the recent administration has joined in. Um, but, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. Gas prices are going through the roof. Um, you know, here in, in Tampa, Florida, I've had gas prices rise 27 cents in one day. So um, gas is going through the roof. Uh, commodities is going through the roof and, uh, you know, food and everything else is going through the roof as well, uh, because, you know, it costs money, more money to transport that food from place A to place B, um, to your grocery store. And then now from you to pick it up from the grocery store. So, um, you know, it's really unfortunate times that we're living in. The inflationary aspect is insane. Um, I kind of wrote a Twitter thread the other day that, uh, you know, people give a lot of shit to the gig economy, but I think that that gig economy is kind of here to stay because um, more and more people are just having to work and uh, get multiple jobs and um, find a way to find extra income. And so through that extra income, a lot of people, you know, either drive Uber, do Uber Eats or pick up people's groceries, um, et cetera, et cetera, just finding some creative ways to get more money and because they're finding these creative ways to get more money, they can now afford, you know, some of the more, uh, not, not even luxuries, just afford to live downtown or afford to, you know, eat out with friends on a weekly basis or, or things like that. Just meet their normal expenses. Um, and there's another aspect of people uh, that we actually talked about in our Twitter spaces on Friday. Uh, so if you don't join the Twitter spaces, follow at Green Candle IT on Twitter and you'll see that we do two a week. Um, but uh, our buddy Masa, um, Masa Sun Cap, he, he was talking about um, there's another group of people that are now having to become somewhat of hedge fund managers. So they're going to have to go not only to work, drive to work every day, but then they're going to have to, um, they're going to have to, uh, you know, actively manage their portfolio in order to try to beat uh, inflation. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not necessarily as easy now um, to just throw money into the S&P 500. And, you know, everything is going to work out great because the S and P 500 is just kind of uh, a crapshoot at this point. I mean, it was up like 20% last year, but there's some stocks that are up like 
hundreds of percent. So everybody's kind of chasing that uh, get rich quick kind of uh stock or scheme or, or what have you, um, whether it's through the stock market or through some short sort of uh, shit coin cryptocurrency. Um, you know, of course, my my stance on Bitcoin is very public and everything like that. And I'm a Bitcoin only guy and everything like that. But there's a lot of people jumping into these smaller cryptocurrencies, um, trying to find their way and find, uh, you know, a way to make a big profit quick. So um I think that it's a very interesting time and I feel really bad for, uh, you know, there's, there's two groups of people the the middle and the lower class, the lower class might never be able to afford uh, housing unless something, you know, drastically stops or wages for some reason shoot up quickly, um, which is very hard to see, uh, you know, cause normally people get raises like once a year. Um, and I don't see that changing very often uh, because the expenses are variable. You know, you're never going to have like a set gas price for an entire year or, a, you know, a set price of whatever commodity or um, thing that you use in your um, in in your business uh, going forward. So um, those prices are going to be variable. So you got to keep the um, keep the salaries stable so you can analyze it going forward. So. Enough of all that, enough of the macro talk. I think like, you know, the, the, at the end of the day, it's an inflationary environment. You need to invest your money, not financial advice, obviously, but you need to find a way to, uh, you know, make your money grow and make your money work hard for you. So that's why, uh, you know, I started all this. I started to try to t t tell my friends, tell Dan who left me uh, in the dust, RIP. Um, and uh, yeah, and I, and I hope that, my podcast reaches enough people to, you know, reach them because I'm, I'm just an average guy here trying to uh, find my way in this, in this crazy world as well. And now uh, we'll, we'll break down um, the Valkyrie Bitcoin mining ETF. Uh, so it came out earlier this year and it's an actively managed ETF that invests in public publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies that's specifically focused on using renewable energy. So uh, they kind of tout that 77% of renewable, uh, that the portfolio uses 77% of renewable energy, and it'll allow investors to get exposure to the Bitcoin mining industry. It's easily accessible because it's, you know, it's available on NASDAQ, so you could get it essentially anywhere, including your retirement accounts if you don't have a, you know, a good retirement account that lets you invest in Bitcoin or other things like that. Um, and it also, uh, is easily accessible or oh, I already said that I'm sorry. And it's actively managed by a team uh, that follows the industry closely. So, you know, I was talking earlier about ETFs and how it's, uh, not necessarily, you know, throwing money in the S&P 500 is the, is the best way to do it right now. But if you want to get exposure to this giant growing industry, uh, and it's rapidly expanding, you can definitely do that now. Um, with this Bitcoin mining ETF. Um, and so, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's very beneficial because, um, as, like I said, it's a growing industry um, and it's uh, rapidly growing, rapidly changing. There's more and more players coming in and there's more and more players that are going public. A lot of these companies are brand new. Uh, we broke down three of the big players in the past three weeks. Um and you'll see that two of those big players are in this uh, fund being held, but one is not in the top 10 holdings. So it's something interesting to talk about in a minute, but we will get there. Uh, so at the time of this uh, recording, the WGMI ETF is trading at $23.16 with a low at $20.68 and a high of $30.51. So it started the year at about $27 and five cents. Uh, so year to date, it's down about 3.9%. Um, and then here's the top 10 holdings. Argo blockchain, BitFarms, which we broke down last week, CleanSpark, Hive blockchain, Strong Digital Mining, BitDigital, DigiHost, DMG blockchain solutions, Marathon Digital Holding, which we broke down three weeks ago, and Power and Digital Infras. So uh, if you notice, out of the three that we broke down, HUT 8 is not one that is in it in, in this uh, top 10 holdings. I believe that the ETF holds it, but obviously not in the top 10. Uh, very small percentage. Um, 
So the first couple companies were 10% and then it went 9%, 8%. Um, and then Marathon and Power Digital um, and a few of the others only have 4% of the uh, weight in this ETF. So, um, you know, Dan and I kind of talked about HUD aid, how they're focusing on a lot of uh, weird things like, you know, like like diversity, is, it's good and inclusion is good at to, you know, make people feel like they're working in, the, in a great environment. But at the end of the day, I like to see companies that are focusing on, you know, hiring the best people and bringing in the best people to, um, <clears throat> you know, make that company prosper. Um, and then they're also getting deep into the Web3 space. And I don't necessarily think that's a good idea. I think that early stage companies should really focus and hammer in on one specific thing. So whether that's Bitcoin mining, if they want to do Web3, then fine. I don't agree with it. But, you know, at least focus on one thing. I feel like in a, if a small company is going into all these different things, it's like shiny objects and syndrome for a new entrepreneur where they're like, hey, you know, this looks cool. This looks cool. This looks cool. And then they do a lot of little things, but they never finish one project. And that's how I feel about HUD8 is that they they're going in and they're, you know, bouncing around and doing all these different things, but they're not necessarily going in and, uh, you know, and, and focusing and mastering the craft of Bitcoin mining. But, you know, I could be wrong. And if somebody wants from HUD8 wants to come and, uh, you know, defend that point, then, you know, I'd be more than happy to have them on as well. So I'll get into the uh, Bitcoin or the, the bullish and the bearish thesis as to why I feel, um, you know, you should and maybe you shouldn't consider the, um, the uh, investing in the ETF here. So uh, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but uh, there's broad exposure to the rapidly growing Bitcoin mining industry. So, um, you know, it's estimated that the cryptocurrency mining size is estimated to be about 400 or about 400, 4,500 million um, in 2026, where it's about 450 million or no, sorry, I'm 4,050 million um, in 2022. So the percent change and everything like that, they see it to grow, uh, in CAGR about 3% for the next five years. So it's going to be growing rapidly and it's already a very, very large industry. And kind of like how I stated before, um, you know, if you don't necessarily know too much about the industry, you can get broad exposure to it by just managing or just investing in this ETF. Uh, you know, you know that Bitcoin mining is growing quickly and, uh, yeah, and you want to get a piece of the pie, why not? Um, so full disclosure, I'm a holder of WGMI and uh, I plan to keep holding it for a while. And, uh, you know, this is obviously not financial advice and I'm not trying to sway you in any way, shape or form. But um, I also don't know too much about, um, you know, specific ins and outs of it. Uh, I have opinions on some of the uh, companies that they're that they're holding obviously and i've done a few research or a few um research on a few of the companies but uh you know at the end of the day it's i think the broad exposure is just kind of the best route for me uh personally and you, you know you can uh, decide that for yourself um the next bullish point i have is that it's expertly managed so uh, kind of like I stated just before, like the broad exposure and expertly manage are kind of hand in hand, right? So um, if you're not sure that you necessarily want to um, want to invest in like a single company, you don't know, there's going to be definitely like winners and losers in the Bitcoin mining industry. Um, and uh, you want somebody that's following it closely. Um, so they usually say to invest, stick with what you know. And if you do know Bitcoin mining, then maybe that this isn't the route for you, right? Maybe you should um, invest in individual companies because you feel you have a good edge on uh, company X and you think company Y is going to fail. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, I think for investors that are looking into ETFs uh, and expertly managed one in this kind of industry could be a good choice going forward. And then last but not least, um, if Bitcoin isn't going anywhere, neither is mining because Bitcoin mining is essential for the Bitcoin industry and it's essential to keep the Bitcoin market going. So um, if you want exposure to the Bitcoin mining industry, 
Bitcoin or uh, this ETF is definitely a good opportunity. Uh, it just started. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where it goes in the future. Now let's get into the bearish thesis. Sorry, I need a little bit of a drink. Uh, talking to myself, you know, for this long a period of time. Uh, yeah, I guess I just like to hear my own voice at the end of the day. But anyway, um, we're going to keep this kind of short and sweet as well. Um, so yeah, the, the bearish thesis is that there's less risk, but there's also less reward. So generally speaking, an ETF um, is kind of carried by a few companies and carried down by a, another few. So it's going to get a good return, or if it's going to get a good return, uh, it might not, necess not necessarily be the best return that you could possibly get because you could have invested in um, a couple companies that take off, um, but the ETF also holds like a couple companies that are losers. Um, and that's also one of my other negative points is that, you know, you don't necessarily have control over the holdings of this ETF. So you could be investing in companies that you don't agree with. You could be investing in companies that are losers in the Bitcoin mining space. Um, and you can be investing in, um, you know, companies that, uh, that end up failing and, and disappearing for forever and wiped off the face of the earth. So, um, you know, it, it really depends on uh, your viewpoint of an ETF. Um, but like I said before, I think if, if you're not willing to do the research and everything and search and uh, analyze a lot of these companies, I think this is a good route to go. And last but lot, not least, uh, you know, the bears, the bears out there, shout out to the bears, um, shout out to the haters of which there are many. Um, the Bitcoin bears think Bitcoin is going to fail. And if you think Bitcoin is going to fail, why the hell would you invest in mining? I don't know. Don't ask me. I, I'm a full believer of... Uh, I'm a full believer in Bitcoin. I'm a full believer in the industry. I think it's here to stay. I think it's way too big to fail at this point. And I think it's way too big to be stopped. So I believe that Bitcoin will prosper and i think that mining will be an essential part of that and the companies now that are getting in and mastering that bitcoin mining um will definitely help uh you know going forward and uh once they master it um you know then you can kind of broadly branch out into a few other things so um that's my kind of analysis on the ticker wgmi the bitcoin mining etf um yeah, this is a quick short rip because I don't have anybody else here with me to kind of go through and and uh, challenge any of my points or kind of talk about anything else I got going on. So, um, you know, I'm here just hanging out. Um, if you guys got any guests, please send them my way and uh, we can get a little bit more of an A and B conversation um, because I think that's how that, that'll make it uh, better going forward for everybody else. So, um, like I said, I'm Brandon at Green Candle. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Green Candle IT. Um, subscribe to my Substack. I put out two a week. Um, one on specifically on the stock um, on Monday, and then one on Friday where it'll be uh, the state of Bitcoin, um, state of Bitcoin newsletter where I'm essentially breaking down the recent um, things that went on in the Bitcoin realm. And then I also host this podcast here that you're listening to and the State of Bitcoin podcast as well. Um, and if you have any questions or comments or concerns about any of this stuff, feel free to drop in on my Twitter spaces. I have one on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern time and then one on Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time, our Bitcoin happy hour. So uh, I know that's a lot. Follow me on Twitter and you can see everything I got going on. And uh, yeah, join me in everything else. And I hope to see you soon. Um, yeah, Brandon out. Boosh.